Game chat for Saturday, July 29th, 2023. It is uh, season 17, episode 25. I'm Scott. And I'm RJ. And welcome to the show. Before we begin, our fantastic new clapboard that will help me to sync my audio later on. Courtesy ORJ there. But uh, welcome into the show. Uh, if you want to get in touch with us, our phone number is 334-272-9228, 334-272-9228. You can also uh, check out ingamechat.net. For all the links to get in touch with us, you can find us on Twitter at ingamechat. You can find us on Facebook there as well. You can also email us, everyone, at ingamechat.net. Uh, We're streaming right now on Twitch. Uh, you can go to twitch.tv and join you know, the chat room or just... Watch our faces on your phone or your TV or computer, however you're enjoying the show or want to see the show. Uh, Don't forget about Discord as well. Uh, You can join our Discord and participate in the show, talk to us on the air, that sort of thing. So uh, feel free to do that if you would like to as well. Links to our Discord can be found at our website. Go to endgamechat.net for all those links at the very bottom of the page. You have to scroll forever because it keeps expanding, but just you'll eventually get to the very bottom of the page, and uh, that is where uh, the links shall be. Maybe I'll think about moving those up to the top. Probably should. Anyway, so welcome into the show, I think. Should I do it next week? So, you know, August is coming up, Mm -hmm. and we usually take... Um, you know what? We didn't do that in June. I was going to say we usually take a day off a month, one Saturday off a month. And I realized in June we actually never did. But in July we took that Saturday off. And I'm wondering if we should do it because we'll be off the first Saturday in September. Mm-hmm. So I'm looking and seeing what weekend I would do it. Maybe not next weekend, maybe the weekend after. When's Evo? Late, uh, mm. shouldn't that be coming should be, around? Should be coming. It should be coming up soon. Evo, early August. Because usually, it's, usually it's in July. So it's usually be around. Uh, there you go. Yeah. Thursday, August third through Sunday, August sixth. So yeah. it's this weekend. This weekend. Okay. Um, tempted, but I think. Uh, oh my god! I'm trying to think of what's going on. Can't think of any releases uh, game wise right. coming up soon. So yeah, exactly. Like that. That's where I, that's where I'm thinking. Like you know, if something's going down, but really nothing. Starfield comes out on the first. August is uh, the twenty second. Of course, is when Destiny will release their like or release information mm-hmm. uh, about what's going on. So yeah, so yeah, I would say the fifth, the twelfth, either this Saturday or next Saturday is is probably when we'll do it. But well, I we'll don't. Just, we'll just play it by ear like we exactly. Do. I don't yeah. know. This might be the. This might this might be a show before we take a break. I don't know. Mm-hmm. We'll see. It all depends on uh, how things play out. <clears throat> Regardless, um, yeah, just exactly. It, it's one of those things where I used to be adamant about like, hey, look, we only do this one show a week, so you know, let's. I, I'm going to make sure that I'm here for it. Mm-hmm. Um, 
that lasted a good many years, and then I was, and it's probably after the heart attack, maybe, where I just said, you know, <laughs> I don't have to. There's there's no reason for me to just call it and say, yeah, not gonna do it. Even even implementing like one Saturday a month that I take off, it's like, yeah, because uh, I mean I'm here at the station five days a week. Yeah, uh, Monday through Friday I'm here, and this extra Saturday is on my own behalf. Mm-hmm. You know, this is something I enjoy doing. And talking about video games, which yeah. is why I do it. So you know, it's, it's 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 interesting to think of it as a vacation, even though it's a Saturday. You're already off, man. It's not a vacation. <laughs> Just take the day off like normal. We already have phone calls. Hi, you're on in game chat. Who's this? This is Chris. Hey, Chris, what's going on, man? Not much. Ah, uh, your phone's getting some weird. Say something for a minute. Yeah, how about now? I think that's a little bit better. Go ahead. Mm-hmm. Well, maybe not. It's gotten weird again. Yeah, we got that. We got that. Uh, we got that echo effect. Going yeah, on like you're in a underwater thing or some weird thing going on with it. Try, try again. Hello. No. Loud echo this time. Is Any it better? Uh, you, uh, you into speakerphone, your smartphone, or or? Uh, no, it's all house phone. House phone. Okay. Oh man, I don't know what that is then. Yeah, that's. I, I don't know what's going on with it. Uh, I tell you what. Try. I'll, try. I'll just try this. Just hang up. Okay. Okay. Bye. 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 All right. Hey, he's hey, gonna hit over. Hey, look, uh, if push comes to shove, folks, Discord. Discord has never given us a problem. It's always. It really good. works very, very well. In uh, fact, I mean, he's uh, gonna pop in there in a minute, uh, and we'll we'll get him in. Yeah. In fact, no matter where you are in the world, Josh calls from Germany, and the thing sounds like he's right next door. I know. On Discord, it's great. Yeah. Okay. I see. There he is, and he should be popping into the room here in the momento, mm-hmm. sometime or another. We've stopped the show for Chris. <laughs> Jump in the room. He signed in. Well, anyway, when he when he shows up, there he is. All right. I gotta get the headphones set up. I know. <laughs> He's joined the room. We see him in the room. There's always that delay. You join the room. It says you're there, you're ready to go. But no, you gotta still gotta still set up some uh, set up some stuff before you can actually start talking. He is okay. Yeah, he's he's there. Hey, there you there are. You if the darn phones would work, it'd be better, wouldn't it? But oh well. Hey, this sounds great, dude. Yeah, it does. This really sounds good <laughs> compared to that phone we were getting. This sounds really, really good. So what's up? What are you? What's going on? What's going on? Like we had talked last week, uh, the uh, the road nice hits that y'all got hooked on. Uh, I got hooked on it as well. I'm, I'm I was loving it too. I've been I've been enjoying it. Yeah. Look at that. Yeah, Look at I picked, Biloxi uh, Gambler done turned on a couple of people to a, to a video yeah. game. In fact, I uh, I picked up that bundle myself. So I've, oh uh, my god, I, I got we got three, it, so, yeah. three people playing it now. <laughs> yeah, it's not a bad game. No, it's not. No, it's really not. No. Um, it's kind of it's you know I mean uh, it's, you know he knows his stuff. Mm-hmm. Luxie Gambler knows his stuff. Yep. So uh, that's that's good to know. So yeah, you're playing Road 96 on what system? On uh, PlayStation 5. PlayStation. All right. Okay. Cool. Yep. All right. Mm-hmm. How's it been going for you? Oh, I've been enjoying it. Uh, I got hooked and played for several days on it, and then every other day has been Mr. Prepper, and then Diablo 4 with Mason whenever he can play late at night. So that's mainly those three. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, fantastic, man! I'm glad you're. I'm glad you're enjoying it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a fun one. I'm still trying to see if I can get through the thing without uh, losing anyone. Have you played it yet? Or? No, I just I just got just got the thing. Just got the bundle put in there. So yeah, the so now I've got now I'm trying to determine which one to play. Do I want to play the prequel first, or do I want to play the uh, the original Road ninety six? Right. Do I don't. You know, first? that's yeah. a good that's a good question because um, you know you think about it. Where uh, the prequel is stuff came out after the main game. So, I mean, everybody has experienced it, or at least mostly everybody has experienced it. And I would say also that it was developed after the main game was developed. Mm -hmm. So, in a sense, you're playing it as intended by the developers, which would be play the main game first, the prequel stuff after. Yeah. But if you, you know, want to be chronological about it, I have to say that word very slow because I know I'll I'll just just wreck it. 
uh, that uh, then you know you could start that way. But I don't yeah. think you're losing anything going either way. Mm-hmm. I don't think there's anything. You might actually catch more references for the fact that you played the main game mm-hmm. first, and then I, however how they've built the mm-hmm. prequel to tie into that, it will yeah. make more sense. Maybe I yeah. don't know. It's I'm obvious. thinking the same way. Yeah, and it's, that's, that's why I decided to play the main game first and then play the prequel after. See, that's this is the the reason I'm thinking that is because this is DLC. It is not an expand alone kind of like a, uh, a the 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 lost legacy or whatever it was for Uncharted, right. which was originally going to be some DLC, some add on, but mm-hmm. they expanded it, and then you could play that without having played any of the other stuff. So it really, yeah, it was it's it's really either or I think, but I imagine they have built the the prequel in the the or the the stuff that happens before. Mm-hmm. They probably built that having in mind that you have played the main game first. Yeah, not that they say it, because I'm sure you can do it either way. But it's yeah. just just a just you know just a thought. Yeah. Just and, having that, just yeah. having, just having that bundle sold all at the same time. You, you're getting it all at once, so you got, so you got to make that decision anyway. Yeah, Bev and Brian in the chat room says, "Is it multiplayer? It is not." Um, your story. Yeah, it is. It's it's totally story. It is totally based on your decisions and not other people's decisions that are playing with you, type of thing. So there is no, there is no multiplayer in this. It is a story mission, a branching story mission, uh, and it's got a lot of parts to it. That are not um, what's the word? To, what's the word? Not it's not convoluted or anything. There's a lot of parts to it because there's a lot of players in the game, and you've got to, you know, you're going to go through multiple different stories with them. It's amazing, honestly, that something like that little game, which feels like it's independently made, um, or at least independent in the sense of what we think of AAA gaming now, is that uh, it's that it's got all of that in there. Go ahead, Chris. I'm sorry. Uh, have you played through there and got to that area where you had to be the cameraman for the reporter? Yes. Uh, did you just keep messing up on purpose to make her mad and make her fuss at you? No, no, no. I was playing it. I was playing it straight. Uh, she started uh, cussing like a sailor with me. I just kept doing it over and over <laughs> and over. And <laughs> Getting achievement off of that? Is there? Yeah, there may be. I don't know. I, I don't know, but I, I got one of the uh, the power ups or something like the lucky, you know, one of the uh, special things that you know the powers that you can gain. But I didn't know if that was part of the normal process or not. But yeah, I, I made her really mad. Mm. No, I didn't play that. I didn't. I didn't do that part with it. But it's nice to see those little details like that in the game, like that, like uh, consequences of your actions, I guess. But yeah. Oh yeah, totally. Pop up. Pop yeah. Up here and there. No, 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 totally. It's it, like I said, great game. It, or it, it's it's got the makings of a really good game. If you if you like that sort of thing, uh, there are some people who don't, and and I totally get it that they that they wouldn't. It's too, it's too talky, not enough action, or not enough. You know, it's yeah, just it's, it's pure story. There was one game. Yeah. There was another game like that that uh, I think you talked to me about. Uh, Firewatch. Yeah, it's not an action, not an action oriented thing. It's just you you sitting in the fire tower and you have little things going on. And right. You, how you process through that? It is, it is, and it's it's very very narrative driven mm-hmm. uh, for that one as well. Mm-hmm. So yeah, Firewatch was a good one also. Uh, if you haven't played that, now it doesn't compare in the least to the branching stories that you have out of Road ninety six. Mm-hmm. I would say Firewatch is strictly point A to point B type of thing. Mm-hmm. There are really no variations in that that I know of. Yeah. And did it leave on a? Did it leave? Did it? Did it? Did it end on a cliffhanger? It felt like it kind of, kind of did. I can't remember. I'd have to go back and, and look at it. Yeah. Firewatch I, is what I was thinking. Of. I played it too, but I, it's been so long. I don't forgot too. It's a long time ago. I remember the the ending, not necessarily being a disappointment, but feeling like okay, I can't wait to find out what what's next. Not that it's not maybe not that it felt like a cliffhanger, but I felt like there was supposed to be more to it. Maybe I can't remember. I really can't remember. Yeah. Uh, but I, I just have that feeling that I was not overjoyed with the the ending. I was okay with it, but I felt like not I fully needed, satisfied with the ending. I didn't feel like it was close. I, I guess is that know? I guess is that rule. Uh, what's that rule about always leaving wanting more? Maybe that type of thing. But don't. I mean, sure. But how does that make me feel now? 
You know? Anticipating the next one. But they only well, only leave them anticipating wanting more if you're going to make another one. <laughs> they probably intended to, but you know how it goes. The nut we had we they planned to make another one, but the numbers weren't good enough and nope, we're scrapping it. That's one of them square enix moves, you know? That type of thing. Something like that, yeah. yeah. Well, Chris, happens all the time. Yeah. Uh, it's it's good hearing from you, and I'm sorry the phones didn't work, but uh, Discord sounds great with you on there. So, thank you for I'm that. It's, it's something to do with the, uh, the the house phones based through the internet, but sometimes I have even echoes call my mother, which is she's using the same company and phone service as we do. But there's no telling. I have no idea. I just know the Discord sounds great. So that means your internet's good. Uh, but I don't know why the phone does that. And honestly, it's probably not even you. It's probably our. It's probably on our end more than anything else. So don't worry too much about it. Because, I mean, last week he called and you sounded fine. Yeah, it's one end or the other. And who knows uh, all the mess to go through to figure out which one is which is ain't really worth it, is it? I don't think so. Uh, I mean, I would like to get to the bottom of it at some point, but I don't think we're ever going to get there. So, But yeah. we appreciate yeah, hearing from you. Right. One of those things is kind of always bugs you, but you wish you could know. But you know, but if you can't do anything about it, no, oh well, huh? I, I guess it's not. I, I, this this is above my knowledge of how this stuff works in here. Uh, with that, so it comes down to one person, and there's just far more important. And I'm and I'm not even being facetious about this. Far more important things he's got to work on uh, currently. So yeah, uh, but. Still, uh, we got Discord and we got you on, so uh, good hearing from you, Chris. And if you, again, I, I know you like to call back during the show because you'll hear something and be like, oh, that, because we won't know something, but you'll have the answer. So just hit us up on Discord again or call in, you know, that's fine. We can try the phones again and again, so. All right, well, I'll see you later then. All right, dude. All right, take care. Take care. Right. Bye-bye. All right, bye. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll see how the phones go. But uh, Discord, you heard the difference. It sounds really good. Night and day. Use the Discord, Luke. Uh, been on a Star Wars kick lately. I finished up the Obi Wan series, and then I've been going periodically. This is just stuff I watch when I exercise. Yeah. Uh, so I've been going through Bad Batch, which is that animated show. I'm only like six episodes into the first season, and it was, yeah, um, it's got moments of like, oh, it's nice, but it's the same guy that did Star Wars Rebels. So I'm. Very interested to see what he does with that. There's two mm-hmm. seasons of it, so I'm watching that. Plus, I'm also playing Jedi Fallen Order, mm-hmm. uh, which I picked up some more of that. We're going to talk about the games we played coming up here in just a few, uh, but we're getting close to our uh, our break here, and I think we're going to take it. And then when we come back, we'll jump into what we played as well. Not a lot of news to go over. There's not a lot like happening that I saw. Now, others could probably... Uh, say, oh no, this happened, this happened. And we've got some news lined up here, and we got some news late uh, yesterday, actually, uh, with uh, a couple of things. Final Fantasy fourteen, I believe, being one of them, uh, coming to Xbox and stuff, so we'll hit that. And we just talked about Evo, that's next week. But, um, but yeah. So, we're going to come back right after this. we got music here from, see, that's not right. Did I not send those over? Am I going to have to Am I going to have to do the thing where I talk to buy ourselves time while I send over the I swear I send them over. But I'm going to send them over again. The audio. Maybe that vaunted internet didn't work like it was supposed to this time around. I swear, man, I try so hard. <laughs> I make sure I get here and I get things done and then I get I get everything ready and so yeah. Now I have to um log in remotely, which is what I'm doing now. There's like three different computers I have to go through. I you gotta find a way to streamline this process. Right. I could just walk through the door into that room over there and then do it. But I can't because we're about to go to break. Nope. Um, so what I'm going to try and do here is log in remotely. There, we've got that one. So let's go here. Can you recall what you pulled over? What you? Uh, oh no! I mean, I I know what I got to do. No, I mean I, what you plan to pull over. What you? What songs? What kind of thing? That, oh, I don't. Out? I don't know which one's going to show up first because they're on a they're on like a rotator type thing. Okay. And I never know. 
I say I never know. I do. Wait a second. I got a discovery. No, 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 we're good. We're good. Okay. I was like, wait a second. Didn't I use these already? No, I did not. Uh, so we're going to send that. Okay, here we go. They're being sent now. Allegedly. Yeah, no, I'm watching them come through. <laughs> Again, allegedly. Uh, well, well, what this tells me, though, is that even though this title may be from last week, it says a little to the left, which mm-hmm. is what we played last week. Even though this title says that, something different will play once they're all over here. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I'm just making sure that everything has shown up. And Remind me again how old the system is. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Probably older than some people who listen to the show. <laughs> and I am not kidding on that. Uh, actually, you know, no, I think when we picked it up, it was not necessarily new, but it also wasn't old at that time either. So if I do this, hit this button here, aha, it changed. So Good. we're going to go to break. And uh, when we come back, we'll jump into what we've been playing and that sort of thing. Got music here from a game that just came out recently here, Baldur's Gate 3. Hmm. Uh, It is the main theme to Baldur's Gate 3. We'll be back with more of in-game chat right after this. back to in-game chat this is music from a game called wobbly life uh, the name of the track is called 80s mall so remember what this game was about when i looked it up or when i found it but there you go so what have we been playing this week uh, rj what have you been dipping into Road um, 96, well no i just downloaded you it. just downloaded just the thing yeah. yeah so i just picked that up um let's see i did play some uh warframe yeah. Got back into that a little bit. Started to get some uh, things built in the dojo uh, with the clan that I'm with. Uh, still trying to build up some things with uh, my uh, characters. Still getting some Warframes here and there. So I have to figure out how to use that um, secondary um, operator function that I, have done, I know nothing about, but probably a quick YouTube video or something away that I can probably figure out what that is. I got back into playing uh, Virtual Fighter Five. Yeah. Uh, had some uh, matches in there. I've had some uh, good things here and there, but the rust is obvious. It's evident. I'm not reacting as uh, quickly as I used to, so I'm still going to have some time playing uh, more matches and everything. I mean, it also doesn't help that I'm only maybe 700 matches in, and the people I'm playing against are at 15, 16,000 matches in, so that, that's, uh, that's a bit good that I can get a, a round or two off of folks who's uh, playing that much. Yeah. Because they know the matchup a heck of a lot better, more than I do. Uh, just got some... Uh, Got some more time in MLB The Show 23. It's double XP weekend, so I've been able to get toward get towards the goal of uh, getting a bunch of levels picked up for my uh, my uh, in-game uh, player. I had a good outing the last time, as opposed to the one where I was throwing slow balls all day. I was actually throwing good uh, knuckleballs this time around. Yeah. So I didn't have as many hits sprayed along as I did uh, the first game. 
Let's see. And other than that, um, oh, got back into Elden Ring. There's okay. Some un- there's some unfinished. They, we were talking about unfinished business uh, in uh, episodes prior. So Bloodborne was one, and Elden Ring was uh, one of the others. I'm trying to get the uh, Frenzied Flame ending. but uh, How do you get that? I'm trying to think. It's like I think it involves talking to one of the NPCs where you have to give her um, um, Shibari grapes, which are basically eyeballs for her to eat, um, and unlock other things here and there to uh, get the story, get the proper storyline going. And, they, and I think you got to find some secret... Um, area in one of the locations in a dungeon somewhere and I can actually be um, um, indoctrinated into the cult basically to be a part of the frenzied flame um, okay. group and after I beat the game in the while in that group I can get the actual uh, frenzied flame ending and if I'm not mistaken if I do that I could get a platinum um, I could actually get all the trophies I um, can in Elden Ring if I do that and then I've also decided to do some of the uh, evil evil things you can do in there, like join the Volcano Manor, like assassinating um, different um, tarnished throughout the game. And uh, this is just a different story route that I could take. Interesting. Um, Again, I, to, I know yeah. very little about Elden Ring other than, you know, the basics of it as far as <clears throat> who made it. Yeah. I mean, there's some, uh, but going this route um, was good for me because it actually allowed me to get some things that I couldn't get um, going through the normal playthrough that I do. Normally the as chivalrous as I could, basically, but uh, the dark route, so to speak, there's only certain things you get only by doing some foul things in the, in the game. So, like, a certain sets of armor, certain um, um, talismans to boost your stats. Some you get some wep- some certain weapons I think you can only get by doing uh, the Volcano Manor route. So, being able to pick up all these things is, um, I'm liking that, liking that aspect of it, getting a, completing, like, collections and things of that nature. Going uh, going that route. Anything else? Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. That's it. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, do you plan on jumping into Road ninety six this week? I guess. Uh, probably this week if I can if I can pull away from um, it might be the show and um, and others like that. But yeah, I mean I downloaded it, bought the thing. Yeah, so yeah I keep saying I'm going to go back to it. I never do. Because <laughs> um, I sit down and I, or I so you know last week we talked about. It, I thought yeah I'll go back to it. I got home. I edited the video and then. Uh, uh, and then we watched TV or whatever, and I guess or yeah, uh, I don't I I don't I don't usually play anything once this video starts rendering and all this other stuff that it does. So yeah, uh, and then I you know I get up and I don't think about it again. You know, uh, come Sunday I don't think about it again until Saturday rolls around. I'm like oh yeah, Road ninety six should have played that. Mm-hmm. Uh, I yeah man. Um, like last week, I was talking about Destiny and not really feeling it, and just like eh, it's not interesting. It's starting to feel like a grind. Yeah, right? it's just not feeling there yeah. for me and that sort of thing. Uh, but I logged in Sunday morning after the show, and I looked over the the event that's going on, which is the Solstice event thing, where mm. uh, you. Fancy armor. Yeah, well, you grind and you fancy armor. And like we said, you can roll the armor for stats and all these other things um, that you can do. But you got to do a lot to do that. And there were 19, I don't know, something like 17 or 19 tasks that you had to do. I know you're rolling your eyes. You got to understand, though, I felt that same way. No, no, I, I know I know what's coming. No, 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 I felt that same way. I, I, went, I, through, yeah, I went through Solstice one time. I know. That's the last time I did it. I know. <laughs> yeah. I felt the same way about that because I looked at it and I just thought, you know what, I'm not going to do any of this. I, I, let me just do my own stuff and, and whatever. Now, I went through the, and I, and I mentioned this already, I went through the initial stuff you had to go through just to unlock and see everything that was there mm-hmm. and i said you know what i'm just gonna there was one there where it was like uh kill people in the pvp matches and i looked at one of the events in pvp was scorched where everybody has rockets and it's you just go through and it, they're usually quick matches and i think you also had to play like 10 of those and those blew by i mean i just boom 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 i got all of those knocked out and while i was doing that i was earning the materials that then you take into this other mission to convert into something else. And they convert at a rate of 
Like if you wear the full set of armor that you get for this event mm-hmm. and you do the conversion, uh, they convert it like, you know, if you have one, it converts into 25 of this other material with a, with a full set. So if you do enough, you get a ton out of just having that. And so when I noticed that, I was like, okay. And one of the tasks was convert this many into this, you know, collect this many, this much stuff, convert it into this much stuff. And after I finished Sunday, I was almost halfway done with everything just by playing normally and, and hitting up this other stuff. I didn't feel like I was grinding, put it that way. Anyway, Tuesday rolls around. And I'm thinking, you know, eh, whatever. I might, I might not. I get, when when the double rep gambit rolls around, I got to do that so I can because I always do that. And I said, I'll just wait. If that happens to come up, then that's great. If not, I'm not really worried about it. Well, Tuesday rolled around and it was double gambit week. I thought, oh, okay. So started playing some gambit and was racking up just tons of material through each match that I was playing. I finished exa- I finished everything I needed to do with Gambit throughout the week. I was done with that by Friday, mm-hmm. uh, by yesterday. Not only that, doing all of that and, and then converting everything and doing all you had to do, it left me with two things left to finish out of those 17 or 19 tasks when I was done. And I was like, oh, well, I can easily knock this out, no problem. Um, and I did this morning, finished it off. Mm-hmm. Got it done. Didn't feel like a grind, even though what they what they did, um, what Bungie did with 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 this event in Destiny, they really reduced the grind. They really, really did. It wasn't. It's not. It just wasn't as much as I remember having to do. Well. They they yeah, significantly last, yeah. reduced the it's number of things. Since the last time I did a um, solstice event, the one thing that stuck out to me more than anything was how tedious this thing was mm-hmm. going through it. That, and, and then seeing what you get at the end, it really wasn't worth it. So I just never got into it. Yeah, so, no, I got it. I get it. So if uh, so if what you're saying is that they took the tedium out. They all that so they I just mean, reduced that number. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. it used to be maybe do this much, or maybe the percentage of doing one thing, like play this many mat, or or I say play this many, but um, you had to run uh, nightfalls or or strikes, mm. and each one, regardless of difficulty, gave you 15 percent progress. Mm-hmm. So I had to do every how many that is to get to 100%, you know, and so I, I did that. Some of that felt like a grind, but whatever. They just it, I finished it up and I did it. In, while I was doing that game stuff throughout the week, by the way, I finished up all my challenges for the season, got that done as well. Everything is finished. I don't um, – um, they're not going to add anything to it. They may add a, a story mission or something but at the end of the – season to bridge into the next season possibly but other than that i have absolutely nothing to do in destiny anymore i say i don't have any nothing that significant to me yeah that i need to do there's plenty you can do in the game other than helping folks out in your in the clan or whatever i mean yeah they're they're, everybody there's pretty good um they're all taking care of themselves the only thing i could think that i might jump into is on my two other characters kind of run them through not this event, but actually run them through the main story because I haven't done any of that. They've been left to the the sidelines here, so that's a possibility. But I'm I'm good. I'm good. I don't have to do that until the new season hits. You yeah. know, which is sometime was August twenty second, twenty third. I August. think. Yeah, very late August is when that hits. So I'm okay. Uh. It was nice when it finally when I when I got that done the uh, regular seasonal stuff. Uh, it was either yesterday or Thursday. I can't remember what day it was that I got it all done. But when I got that done and was counting through the channels, like oh, oh, all I have to do is this like one little thing here, and then I, I'm good. And so I did it and clicked everything, went through it, and and was done. I was like, oh wow, that's great. What do I have left on this solstice thing that I'm working on? Oh, I need to run this many more um, 
I take that back. I do need to run one more Grandmaster Nightfall to get the Triumph. Mm. I can do that tomorrow and then I can be done. Mm. <laughs> I forgot about that. I do have one of those. I'm not doing that uh, solo dungeon clear this time. No, you've had enough of that. I have. I, it means that I will forever be uh, level 10 instead of max level 11, but I'm okay with that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not doing that anymore. Um, there's a whole thing that originally the, uh, the way they describe some of these things meant that if this was a if this was a certain color challenge, there's blue and there's gold. If it was a certain color challenge, if you did it once, it's done forever. Mm-hmm. The blues reset every season, but these always stay the same. And it, that that dungeon run was a gold last year. It's a white this year. Mm. The only one of them that's like that, but it's a white this year, not or this season, not not gold, not blue, nothing like that. So, yeah, I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. The new dungeon? No, I'm not. And if I had known that that was not going to be permanent, I wouldn't have done it last season. I'm glad I did and got it through, but if I had known that that was like, oh, no, you're going to have to do this again every time a new dungeon releases, I said, okay, never mind. Yeah. But if it was, because I'd never soloed a dungeon before. Mm. And so uh, for me, it was... It wasn't worth it. <laughs> you get an item out of it, didn't you? Uh, no, I got a... Uh, Those just bragging rights? I got a, I think I got a... I got something for it. Maybe a sparrow, maybe a ship, maybe an emblem. Nothing memorable, though. I, I can't remember yeah, what nothing, it was nothing, I got. Yeah, nothing memorable enough to, to stick with you, say this is, uh, yeah, this is actually no. an accomplishment. But no, yeah, no, no, okay. no, no. It was, yeah, it was not worth the amount of time. I was glad I did it, and when I got done with it, I was, I was saying that it was worth it because I thought it was done. Mm-hmm. I thought, well, I'm glad, I'm glad that's behind me. Yeah. I don't have to worry about that again. Oh, I do. Well, I'm not. Yeah. Because I just ain't doing that. And this, honestly, this has nothing to do with, like, my time or something like that. It's just, it's, it's just, uh, not, it's not fun. Mm-hmm. It is not fun to bang your head against that wall. And maybe there, there are people who probably do enjoy banging their head against that wall or like the challenge of it or that sort of thing. And if you've got that kind of time and want to put in, it took me like, I put in like five hours on that one dungeon run doing that again and that was at the end of the season when i was massively over leveled to do it um yeah i'm just i'm not going back i'm not going back to that so they can have it and i will be forever 10 and i will be fine with that um i was hoping maybe sometime in the season they would say oh that's a bug we'll flip that you know no it's not yeah you were running a, a hunter at the time. I am still running a hunter. He's my main. Yeah, she's my main actually. I run a yeah, so, uh, female hunter. So hitting up. Uh, so uh, at the level you were playing it, as like two hits and you're done. No, no, no. Back then, no. Uh, on this new one, at this time, probably not two hits and you're done. Yeah, it depends on what's hitting you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it depends on who's firing those words. from the from the rank and file. No, you're fine. Okay. From some of the yellow bar guys, some of the bosses, yeah, yeah, you know, a stomp or two, or a stomp that hits you into a wall. Sure, mm-hmm. that's instant. I'm thinking, death. I'm thinking, the first shot takes your shield, the second yeah. shot takes the life. So there you go. It's not a very. Um, I I've run it through my head, thinking maybe, um, but I went back through it with a couple of the guys from the clan the other day. I can't remember how long ago this was. Right. Uh, cause I hadn't run it in a while. Um, and so, and I guess I needed to for something. I don't know what it was. I don't know what I was doing, but, uh, I ran through it and was thinking about it while I was doing it. I was like, some of this is fine. The opening segment, I could easily knock out. No problem. The mid boss would be a challenge mm-hmm. for me. The final boss would be a massive challenge time sink and challenge for me. I think mm-hmm. both of them would be. Um, they've really they've really gated this this 
the damage you can do to these bosses by giving them a shield that you have to whittle down in order to start chipping away at their health. Mm-hmm. So, like, basically you have two health bars. Yeah. You get rid of one, and then you got to get rid of the other. But the first one regenerates after every damage phase. Yeah. War, Warframe does that all yeah. the time. Yeah. So, like, you can, you can chip away at dude's health... And get him a little bit down, and then the shield goes back up. And then you got to chip away at that shield, yep. and then chip away at his health again on ever how long that damage phase is. Yeah. Now there are ways around that. You can bring you know stuff that pierces shields, and that's fine, and it'll get rid of it in one shot. But it's usually not a good weapon to have. That's the only good part about it is like yeah. popping that shield. Yeah. So that means you're down to basically two weapons mm-hmm. uh, to get through that, and it's just kind of annoying. So I'm I'm not. Uh, and I am saying this, by the way, I'm, this is not like everything else when I say I'm not going to do this and then I go do it. I'm not doing this. I promise, swear to you, it ain't happening. I'm not doing it. So, uh, but will I run some of my alts through the main campaign? That's a possibility. Maybe. But even then, I think I want to get back into my Jedi Fallen Survivor, or Fallen Order, and then uh, Red Dead, still continue. Excuse me. Still continue on with Red Dead, mm-hmm. and I'm start. I, I was for whatever reason I was looking into Max Payne Three. I haven't played that in a while. Hmm. And according to Steam, I've only put 20 minutes into it, hmm. and that feels rather weird. I feel hmm. like I played more something, than that. Did something reset? Maybe I don't did know. You to, did you uh, did you uh, um, take it off your system and then put put it back on or something? I don't. I don't think so, but I don't know. Yeah. Now it would be a game that I was that I have played on my previous system, not or my previous PC that I had built, not this current PC. Mm-hmm. But because I kept thinking, I was like, "Didn't I finish that game?" And I went to look to see, like, how how do I? Let me see how far I've been into it. Twenty minutes played. Mm-hmm. Like that's not right. Yeah. Well, see, what I have to do now is check. Like, I need to check and see: Did I play it on Epic? Did I play it on the mm-hmm. Epic Game Store? Maybe. Mm. Or I feel like I didn't. It could have been so many services nowadays. Sometimes you I get know. crossed up. I know I started playing it on on the Xbox or whatever it was when it released. Yeah, in my case, it was a uh, I was PlayStation. Playing, maybe? I, yeah, I played uh, Max Payne Three. Uh, just a touch of nostalgia, played it again, but it was on PS3 when I was playing yeah. it. Yeah. So it's been a, it's it's been forever since I played it, and and I swear I thought I beat the thing, but I honestly can't remember how it ended. I do remember there was a fight in like a lobby of some building that was, there was a lot of glass and there was a dude with a really heavy machine gun just going to town at you with the... Was that... Okay, now, I will say that the... Or am I confusing that with Quantum Break? Now, the ending of the game uh, for Max Payne 3, you get a touch of it in the prelude. The very intro of the game, you get a touch of the ending. I don't know. I don't know because the prelude was in a, at a at an airport. Yeah, I do remember like a dream sequence or a, or a flashback sequence because mm-hmm. this most of this game takes place in like some. It's in Brazil. Brazil, yeah, yeah. But there's like a flashback sequence that puts you back, back in, in New, New York. York. Yep. Yeah, the the uh, incident in the bar with the uh, mafia mafia Don's kid. That was, that was a pre, uh, uh, it was a flashback of how um, Max uh, met his partner uh, in the game yeah. in Brazil in, uh, in New York. Why do I feel like I've played more of this than the 20 minutes that Steam is telling me? You probably did. But where? I'm pretty sure you did. Where? Not on Steam, apparently. I guess not. But I can't think of where. Other than maybe Epic. But even then, I don't think so. Maybe on the console, but I don't think I did. I think I remember starting it on the console and just not liking the way it controlled. Yeah. And like, oh, I'll play this on PC. Mm-hmm. Probably a lot easier. Uh, I say a lot easier, but a lot more comfortable to play yeah. on PC. And I don't know. Yeah, because yeah. I played it on a, I played throughout the whole entire thing on a console. So, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I'll look into that and see. I just... There's parts of the game that stick in my head that feels like, no, that happens a lot later than 20 minutes into your game. Mm-hmm. Um, I want to say the first 20 minutes of Max Payne 3 is you're going to look at the intro. You're going to go through his um, 
uh, opening sequence, the noir, noir sequence that narrates everything he's been through up to that point. Then he talks about the um, his first gig with uh, pa- I'm trying to think of the partner's name, Palos uh, pa- something something with so, some. Well, I remember the there being a gunfight in a yeah, club. There was a gunfight. Well, the, in the first twenty minutes, there was a gunfight um, at a party. Yeah. At this at this at this fancy hotel. Yeah. Okay. There was a gunfight at this fancy hotel, and you uh, you went all the way through there, and you had to save. Um, this uh, boss's uh, wife or daughter, some, daughter. some family yeah, member, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah the, the slide off the roof into the into the pool thing, mm-hmm. and you get to get your aim your uh, bullet time shot, one bullet, one shot, and hit the uh, guy holding the um, holding the lady hostage. So you have to do that, and then you go to the next um, next scene. That should that should be around uh, fifteen to twenty minutes. Yeah, can't remember. I'll, I'll I'll have to look into it. But uh, Lethal Migraine's correct. Time played should be logged in the Steam system. It shouldn't be tied to your PC. I would agree with you on that. If yeah, no, that would still be well. I don't know that when I played this, I don't know that Steam had cloud saves syncing or anything like that. You know, sort mm-hmm. of uh, cloud syncs and that sort of thing. Yeah, I don't know. How, again, I don't know how long it's been since I played it, but. Yeah, it shows twenty. I was trying to see, like, maybe an achievement will tell me that I finished it. You know, there should yeah. be some achievement. There's nothing there. <laughs> I'll have to check on the console to see if maybe that's where it is. I'll have to check Epic Game Store to see if it's there. But I can't think of any other way I would have played this. Uh, but you know you played it. I know you I played, know you played it. Because it's still I just don't know that I've beaten it. So, yeah. I also did some more Flight Sim stuff, by the way. Not anything specific. Just uh, Just fired it up, and I think I went to Paris. And flew around the Eiffel Tower. Took a look at that. As opposed to into it. Oh, I, I, I completely wrecked the plane. Um, How? I just drove straight into the ground. Um, because? Uh, Wendy was there watching. She's like, what happens? Like, what is it? Because I, I, I think I clipped something and the plane bounced. <laughs> it, it was weird. And, and she said, oh, you can't, you can't crash in this game. I was like, oh, no, you can crash. I don't know what that was because it was a very – it was like a beach ball. Uh, mm. You just kind of bounced and wobbled a little bit for some reason. Mm. And so I said, oh, no, you can crash. And then I sh- straight into the ground. Mm. So I went into the ground and it did an explosion and then my plane's upside down. Uh, and it tells you, hey, if you want to, you know, to reset – Press these buttons on the controller, and then it'll put you back in the air. But I was just like, yeah, I'm done. I just wanted to see the Eiffel Tower. Just fly around the Eiffel Tower. That was all. So, did that. <clears throat> anyway, uh, that is all I played that I know of. What am I thinking? What am I trying to think of? Um, Steam Stealth Fest is going on. There's nothing really that I saw. There's some great deals and some good stealth games. Uh, Splinter Cell in there among them as well, But if you're, if you're looking for those games. But... Uh, yeah, that's happening right hey, now. Did uh, Gunpoint make it on there? It might be on there. I know Ronin is on there, and a lot of Assassin's Creed games are on there. They consider those stealth for some reason. Uh. <laughs> well, it was stealth. Well, according to, uh, yep, when y'all were talking about it, uh, Assassin's Creed was stealth in the very beginning. The very first one is very much stealth, yeah. but yeah, the other, but it's the whole series that's in there, and it's yeah. some of those are very are not. Yeah, because I remember James, especially not stealth. Because I remember uh, back in the day, James was talking about uh, Gun uh, Gunpoint. And how uh, mm-hmm. quite a little simple simple game. Uh, Love Gunpoint. Game, yeah, yeah. It was Gunpoint's great. Game. Yeah, Gunpoint's I did, I, fantastic. I think I downloaded it, but I never, as usual, never played it. Ah, well, give it a shot. Well, yeah. is PC or does PC? Some, okay, it's PC. Yeah. I got, I got, I have a Steam account on my PC, and with all its 13, 14 games, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, Gunpoint is one of them. Well, we're going to take a break here, and then when we come back, we'll we'll dive into what news we've got. Not a lot, but we'll dive into it anyway. Uh, this music comes from a game that has just released. It is a sequel. It is Remnant 2. And I remember seeing trailers for Remnant 2, and I thought, this looks, I'm interested in this. Now, Remnant 2 is released, and it's getting really good feedback. It's getting a lot yeah. of good talk. Um, but in that talk is also about, uh, you know, how the game, how you play that game and how much, I won't say it's grindy, but how, like, I'm not looking to get back in. I'm not looking for another game like that. I got, I got a buddy of mine, a uh, buddy of mine who played the, the first Remnant, and um, one of the things he talked about was how backtracking mm-hmm. uh, will punish you because respawning enemies mm-hmm. will, will show up again. So you don't want to do too much backtracking 
uh, in the game. And I think that's that's more the same in uh, two. But um, if you can manage your if you can manage your backtracking and keep your resources uh, up to snuff, yeah, you probably do uh, do fine in that game. Yeah, uh, I'm hoping so. It was, uh, yeah, it was. I mean, I'm not I'm not planning on playing the game, but I heard good things. And, it, and and what I'm pointing out is not a bad thing that was said. It's just a thing that turned me off. And that was just doing things over and over and over again. Stuff that I'm already doing. Yeah. Like, I don't want another game where I do that. Yeah. I really don't. That's why, that's why when I'm not playing Destiny, I'm playing things like Jedi Fallen Order or, or looking into Max Payne 3 or... Mm-hmm going to play uh red dead 2 or a flight sim or anything that's kind of not what something like destiny is you mm-hmm. know something that's very narrative based very a to b rather than a to pick your point that you want to go to and go there type of thing so mm. anyway we're come we'll come back this is music from nimnet 2 it's called the red prince i guess it's a boss it's one of the bosses in the game Some Probably music for that yeah so we'll be back right after this back into in-game chat what kind of game do you think we're listening to here because i military w- college because right. i would totally go that route like oh he's got music from uh some kind of military game or or so that's a military or college football game college football like manager 2000 or something i don't know uh which is why i thought it was weird the name of this track is called Tough Enemy Fight. <laughs> okay. And it's from Pikmin 4. Okay. Doesn't fit to me, but I haven't heard the rest of the Pikmin 4 soundtrack. That's cute little things with uh, beams on the head, right? Little leafs on their heads. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's for the Nintendo Switch. Pikmin 4 came out this week. Two pretty good reviews, actually. Um, I remember playing the first Pikmin on GameCube, and I actually enjoyed it, but I never touched the series again for Pikmin 2 or 3. Mm-hmm. Never. Was it the GameCube or was it the Wii? I can't remember which one Pikmin originally released on, but I, I only played the first one. Uh, four looks really, really good, and reading some reviews of it, it seems like there's a lot of improvement that was made, not visually, but like mechanically and and control wise and everything else. Actually, oh. seemed decent. October of two thousand one. What system would that be? Uh, that been? GameCube. Uh, GameCube. Yeah, Wii, that would have been the GameCube. Wii U, Nintendo, yeah, yeah, would have been GameCube. So, but yeah, I, yeah, that's the only one I ever played. I really liked it. But I just never jumped into two or three, and four looks really good too. So, again, I'll probably not jump into it either, but it was kind of cool. All right, news. Uh, well, we told you Evo is next week. Uh, that is not necessarily big news. I was looking over the lineup for the games. It's all fighting games, of course, and you've got King of Fighters 15. Uh, Melty Blood's in there for you. Your favorite. Uh, I just like the name, Melty Blood. Uh, Guilty Gear Strive, uh, Dragon Ball Fighters. Tekken Fighter 7. Mm-hmm. Is it Fighter Z or Fighters? I was called it Fighter Z. Because there's no space in that word that I'm looking at on the Evo site. Well, I was associated with Dragon Ball Z, so Dragon Ball Fighter Z. That's what I figured, but and maybe it's on them for 
putting it in. Well, they wouldn't do that. They know fighting games. Anyway, Tekken 7, Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3, Street Fighter 6, and uh, Mortal Kombat 11 Ultimate. Mm -hmm. It's a shame. Well, you know what? They'll probably have a lot of Mortal Kombat 1 stuff there. Yeah, most likely. Uh, the reveal more player, you know, yeah, more characters between, and stuff. In between, uh, usually something at a, usually at the uh, fighting game events, they have some type of uh, exclusive premiere yeah. video showing something uh, of what's coming up in the future. And uh, I imagine you'll see some previews of DLC for Street Fighter Six. Yeah, because uh, they'll probably have that. Yeah. Uh, the finals for if, uh, if it stays true to form, Street Fighter Six is going to be Sunday. The finals is going to be Sunday, uh, Sunday night, prime time. It's going to be the top of. Uh, uh, the finals of it, so yeah. So during that time, or just before the finals kick off, they're going to have some uh, video showing uh, who's 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 coming in the future. So yeah, yeah. So uh, that's your that's your lineup. There's no. I hate that. The, I hate that. There's yeah, no, no more Virtual Fighter Five. Okay. Yeah. No. There's no it's, Virtual Fighter Five. Yeah. It's going to be. Oh, side. did you not know the lineup? No. I, oh, I'm I, sorry. I knew, no, I knew. Uh, I knew Virtual Fighter Five wasn't going to be in there. It's just. It's uh, just going to be like a side term or something. Yeah. There's always some things on the side going on. Right, but there is no Smash Brothers, which was always fun to watch. Mm -hmm. So I hate they took that, that out. Um, but yeah, I still, like I said, I love fighting. I love watching really good players play fighting games. Yeah. Uh, watching those in, uh, in battle adjustments back and forth and things like that. Yeah, that, it's... That's, the, that's yeah. the essential part of a... Of a Playing fighting games competitively. Yeah. How well can you adjust? When plan when plan A doesn't work, what's your plan B? And when that doesn't work, what's plan C? Mm -hmm. And a lot of folks get in there with a plan A and B and don't have C and D, and then they're just kicked to the side. They're done. I think, and remind you again, it's a double elimination tournament. So two losses throughout the entire weekend, and you're out. That rem you know, in a, in a not near the way that you're talking about it mm -hmm. reminds me of how I build some of my decks in Marvel snap. Mm -hmm. Um, there are Galactus, for instance, mm. when you play a Galactus card, it has to be the only card on that lane on your side anyway, mm -hmm. but it also has to be the winning card on that side. In other words, that card's worth seven points. Mm -hmm. So if you lay that card on an empty lane, it also it's it also requires like six power that sort of thing. You have you have to have so much power in order to play the card. So it can't be played turn one. Is what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. uh, it can't be played turn two. The closest I think it can be, well, depending on some of the the different locations that you get for where you can play your cards because they all have different abilities. Some There's one that gives you five extra power. And if that rolls first, everybody gets to play. Everybody gets to have turn one. They have, they have a full power to play whatever they want. Mm -hmm. So that can be a case. But point being is that when you build around Galactus, you're building around the fact that you want that particular lane to be ahead of your opponent and also empty. There are other characters and cards that can help you achieve that. Um, but if you're only building for that, and for whatever reason, the cards don't play in your favor with the draw that you get from your hand, because there's, I don't know, there's like 12 cards, but you can only hold seven at a time. Um, hmm. Or the, the full amount that you can hold is seven. Yeah, yeah. But you start with... I think five, and after each turn you draw one, unless there's other stipulations where you get to draw two or something like that. But mm -hmm. for the most part, it's just one. So it could come out that that card never shows. That card never shows up. Point being is that when I build the deck, I have to build it not only to make him win, but I have to also plan what happens if he never shows up. Mm -hmm. So I need to put this card in here, this card in my deck, and this card in my deck to have a chance at winning without him in there. Yeah. My, I got my plan A is good, but what happens when plan A fails? I got to have my plan B. Right. And at a lot of times you also might want to look into having a plan C in some of these mm -hmm. because of the way things draw out. And so a good versatile deck will, will let you do that. But like you were saying, uh, knowing the different characters in the game, knowing the different uh, weaknesses of know those the, characters, yeah, know the matchups, 
and I guess maybe studying your your opponent too. Not necessarily that you're going to know that opponent. Well, How long do they know it? Uh, they don't obviously because it's on a bracket based system, right? Yeah, it's it's a the tournament brackets the tournament bracket that you're that you set up in. But the thing is, though, a lot of these players, uh, especially in the finals or whatever, you know, they stream. They have a uh, right. podcast, things like that. They have tendencies mm-hmm. and tells. Like every time he blocks this, he does this. Right. So, or uh, or, or what you can do is uh, train your opponent to uh, right. automatically do something uh, to your advantage. Again, yeah. I don't do fighters. I do Marvel Snap, and you're exactly right. Mm-hmm. I can look at somebody's the way that they're playing their cards, mm-hmm. and there are certain cards to get played, and I kind of know what they're setting up for. Yeah. And if you if you've got the hand that can combat that, that's great. If not, you hope you got a plan B, because or at least leave that lane alone, or whatever the case, because you only need to win two out of three. So mm-hmm. it's I know exactly what you're saying because yeah. you can see that every time. What was it? Every time um, I remember in Mortal Kombat two or one, I can't remember. Mm-hmm. Every time he did, every time Sub Zero would do with a slide, yeah, he would follow it up either with a sweep. Or maybe it was in two when he would freeze the the ground to get you to trip up. Yeah, freezing the ground. Yeah, that was the combo. Like every time he comes in for a slide, he's going to throw down the the ice on the ground thing. Ice puddle. So, yeah. yeah, the AI, the AI did that, or uh, that was no, that was watching somebody else play that. It's just a move. This is me sitting in the watching someone play. Yeah, okay, in, yeah. in the in the Walmart lobby of an arcade or something. Oh, yeah. You I know what I'm saying? I remember that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I think that the first time we um, a group of us saw uh, Kintaro in action in mm-hmm. two, and then we were just weirded out. I was like, "Oh, that's not that's not Goro. Who is that?" Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But yeah. So yes, basically uh, two different types of games, but basically strategy, yep. strategizing and uh, updating your plan and uh, changing it up on the fly as needed. And you know, you got like was it four, three, four minutes a game in, yeah. uh, in Snap? Yeah, you got that long to come with a plan and implement it. Yeah, same way in a in fighting game. Though. I mean, it, it don't it, last long, but yeah, it's it's based on the hand that you're dealt because uh, you know it's randomly giving you cards there. But if you've built a good enough deck, you can handle whatever they've given you. Yeah. So whatever card falls, you can make a play out of it, mm-hmm. or at least build towards a play mm-hmm. that you're going to do. And it's the same way with with I guess fighting games. You can, you know, if this guy's very good at this, then what's the best character that is a good opponent against that? Yeah. character that they always go with. Yeah, regardless if you yeah, regardless if you don't know how they play with that character, just knowing what that character is they pick, you know the move set. You don't necessarily have to know how the person plays. You just have to know the move set of that character to know, all right, what's a good opposite to that. Yeah, I think about what can I punish, what can I what do I have to just mm-hmm. eat, eat uh, sit there and block. That's also uh, yeah. one that I'm familiar with that I know Mm-hmm. you know how to handle with or yeah. how to play against so yeah, uh, yeah there's always that I mean, we just spent a whole time talking about evo uh <laughs> i don't mind talking about the fighting games i just don't do the fighting games i yeah. love watching them and that tournament will be fun again to watch even without mm-hmm. smash i wish smash was there i know it's nintendo who have taken that away from us i understand it i thought it was dumb too but they did and that's fine uh, there's plenty of other fighters that could probably use the attention anyway yeah Virtual fighter. Then smash. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right? Virtual fighter. Yeah. That would be good. Uh, let's see. What do we have news-wise? Even before we go to a break here, what do we got on uh, the news? If you're an Amazon Prime member, you can claim eight free games for the month of August. And I will try and get you that list of games. Even since You just have to be a Prime member to Amazon. I know a lot of people are. Uh, but the games this month... Payday 2, that's a great little multiplayer co-op game. Multiplayer bank robbing, yep. That's fantastic. Uh, you also get uh, some DLC in that as well for free. That's August the 3rd. August August 10th, you get Blade Assault and Farming Simulator 19. August 17th, Driftland, The Magic Revival, whatever that is, Four Tales, and Star Wars The Force Unleashed 2. Hmm. Um... For that one, and August 24th, In Sound Mind, and on August 31st, Summertime Madness, whatever that is. So, yeah, those are your free games that you get with Prime for the month of August. Pretty good there. 
Uh, speaking of, I need to fire up my Amazon Prime gaming thing and download whatever the, or at least claim the games that were for this month. I think I already have, but I'll have to check. Hmm. Um, yeah, I got Prime a long time ago when it was only for the free shipping or whatever. It was also a whole lot cheaper than what it is now, but they've added so much to it. So Was it 110 a year? I think it's higher than that. Hmm. Maybe. I could be wrong so, with that. We've got the internet right here. Let's yeah, see. we do. Uh, I thought it was higher than that, but it, 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 but it may not be. Still, you get, you get that plus whatever all the movies and TV shows and stuff that they got on their Prime app. So, it's a, One, it, 140 a year. Yeah. It's, yeah it's, or 15 a month. Yeah, it was more. So, uh, Speaking of, we've got our PlayStation Plus games for the month of August that have already revealed for us. It is... Well, where'd it go? Free games for August are Dreams from Media Molecule. I'm actually interested in that. Glad it's going to get a release mm. on uh, for PlayStation Plus. Uh, Death's Door... And PGA Tour 2K23. Hmm. That might be up for you on that one. I think I already got it, though. Uh, well, then it's not going to work for you, then. Yeah, dude, that, that's the typical thing that happens with uh, the PS Plus games. If it's something you uh, had no interest in or it's something you've already gotten. Yeah. And I think we got our final... Well, I don't see it here. I probably didn't put it in there because it was, it was nothing. But the Xbox Games with Gold thing ends next month. Oh, yeah. They said it was going away. Yeah. yeah. And so the last games for that one are next month. And I don't remember them being anything to write home about. You know, yeah, it wasn't was something say, like... It was either going to be something uh, totally insignificant yeah. or so, or go out with a bang. They didn't go out with a bang. They went okay. out with a whimper. Yes. So. Uh, are we interested in Baldur's Gate 3? I... Am not. I've never played the series. I've heard I've, of it, but I've never. I've, I've never heard of it too, and I've to never. It. I've never played it. Tell you what, Path of Exile Two though is shaping up to be something amazing. Mm-hmm. Uh, th- that is another game that I really haven't played a lot of. Path of Exile, the first one. Mm-hmm. But Path of Exile Two. Um. They've added six new classes to the game, 100 bosses, mm. and it will run side-by-side side with the first Path of Exile. Um, Exile Con took place this year. And so here, here's, I'll just read the article here that we go through it. In 2019, Grinding Gear Games, which I guess is the developer, gave us our first look at Path of Exile 2. This is 2019. Okay. That feels like a decade ago, but it wasn't. <laughs> but it does feel like it was in the past past. Mm-hmm. Uh, anything that feels pre-COVID feels like it was a long time ago. Yeah. For whatever reason, it felt like that year to go through that COVID and then come out of it just was so slow or it took a lot longer than what it was. Mm-hmm. But uh, anyway, uh, 2019, they gave us our first look at Path of Exile 2. And with the exception of a couple of small teasers, we've heard almost nothing about it since then. It was supposed to be a sequel, kind of like Overwatch 2, originally not really a new game, but more like a big patch or a remaster that would update the game with new graphics, content, and systems. Ex- Exile Con this year, all that got changed. Path of Exile 2 is a separate game, and it is a true sequel set 20 years after the original. And there's been a ton of news that was released during the keynote presentation. The story of Path of Exile 2 is one of scope creep. Um, It all started with the desire to update some ancient character models from 2007. Uh, Then it became a series of fun projects. Why don't we update the models? Became why don't we update Act 1? That became why don't we fix the way skill gems work? Which became... Well, let's just make a brand new game. We realized that our plan to replace PoE 1 with PoE 2 would essentially be destroying a game that people love for no reason, so we made a decision. Path of Exile 1 and 2 will be separate, with their own mechanics, balance, in-game, and leagues. Uh, What this means for us as players is essentially twice the Path of Exile. Both games will run concurrently, with a league each, um, each every three months... A new league every month for a half 
uh, every three month and a half for people who will most certainly play both. Um, but uh, yeah, it's 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 gone from being an update to being a full fledged game. Um, here's a quick and almost certainly incomplete list of new features for Path of Exile Two: six new character classes, along with the six from the first game as well for a total of 12 character classes. That's a lot. Uh, new ascendancies with three for each class, a revamped skill gym system where the links are in the gyms themselves. They're not tied to equipment, whatever that means. Tons of new skills, including shape shifting. Also giant comets. I don't know how that'll work. Meta gems, which are gems that can have other gems socketed into them. Uh, let's see new weapon types. A six-act story campaign set set 20 years after, I guess, the ending of the first one. A new map-based endgame. Uh, let's see. What else? Changes to crafting and the economy and over 100 new bosses to battle, each with unique uh, mechanics as well. So, yeah, it's a lot of stuff that they have given us here. Path of Exile 2, the closed beta. Oh, man. The closed beta for Path of Exile 2 starts June 7th of next year. Hmm. I thought it was sooner than that. Yeah. Yeah. Start the hype train early. Yeah, they have. So, yeah, Bama Ryan says, I always wanted shape-shifting in City of Heroes. That would have been cool um, to have that in there. I was just happy we got capes and the and and that was and we had the ability to have like four different outfits and things like that where you could switch your yeah uh your default outfit yeah. your uh, team outfit your things like that yeah yep oh city of heroes good times yeah so we're going to take a break, and when we come back, we'll finish off the rest of what we've got for news. Like I said, there really wasn't a much, which is why we spent so much time on Evo. But, uh, <laughs> there, yeah, there's just not a lot um, happening news-wise. I'm sure in the gaming world, there's plenty to talk about with new releases, but we're not playing those new releases. So, yeah. Coming up, though, we'll jump back into it. Got music here from a game called Space Engineers. It is the main theme for the game, and we'll be right back. Welcome back into in-game chat. This is music from another game that came out this week. I think it was this week or just recently here. Uh, it's called Viewfinder. It's a great little puzzle game. The track for this one is called Final Puzzle. But I believe there's a demo for PlayStation. I think for all systems, there. I think there is a demo for the game. Um, in fact, I don't know. It might not be on Xbox. I'm not sure. But yeah, great little game there. So welcome back to the show. Let's go to the phones and talk to Biloxi Gambler, who's called in. Hey, man. Hey. 
How are you? I am glad to hear that there is a a, a prequel to Route 96. There is, yes. Uh, DLC, I think. Have you played it, or you know anything about it, or what? No, I, I heard RJ mention it for the first time. Yeah, though. And, and, and then I, I looked online to see if I could, if, if, if it, I mean, I said, did he say sequel or prequel? I didn't know. And I looked, and, and yeah, it's called uh, Road 96 Mile Zero. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if it's on PlayStation where I can download it that way. But if it is, I'll be playing it tonight. I'll know more next week or the week after, whenever y'all, you know, I know you're taking a week off at some point. Yeah. But, <laughs> um, but, but, but RJ, but you haven't played Road 96 yet, but let me tell you, after you finish, you'll get a, you, you, you'll have a hitchhiker and then another one and another one, whether you die, get, get arrested or make it across. And, and then after you run out, there'll be a big final thing. That I'm not giving away, and 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 there's actually more than one final ending. Um, the, uh, and there's more than one final ending if you play it again. But the thing is, uh, instead of clicking new game, click continue. Even though you're starting from scratch, you've already finished the entire series of Hitchhikers. Mm-hmm. If you push continue, you get to keep all your skills. And you start over again. And then what I found is some of the chapters or missions, whatever you want to call them, are similar. But then I played it all the way through to the end four times so far. And and there are new missions still popping up. I'm going to keep playing it until there are no new missions in an entire game. Good luck doing that, by the way. Yeah, that's the re- that's the, that's part of the, the replay value, the playing it over and over and over again. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, I'm mm-hmm. telling you, I, I I really uh, I really enjoyed the game, and that's why I even called about it to mm-hmm. to talk about it. But yeah, I'll be. Uh, and what I uh, read on um, when I looked at Road 96 Mile Zero, it said that. Um, uh, it's a 96 minute game. If the criticism was it was too short, mm-hmm. so okay. it's it's not as it's not as expansive as the first one. Now, now the 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 sequel that I'm waiting for is to Red Dead Redemption. So oh yeah, mm-hmm. that's the that's the big mama right there. I want because that is a great game. Well, you're talking about Red Dead Redemption two. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't I don't necessarily I don't think we're going to get a three out of that. I mean we might at some point. Uh, Aren't they working on one? Or they were before the uh, pandemic? Uh, not Red Dead. I don't believe they were working on uh, right now. Their their focus is Grand Theft Auto Six. I believe mm-hmm. uh, that's the new one from them uh, from the yeah, the well, Rockstar they're folks. Just, they're doing that for money though. I mean <laughs> you know you got to go where the money's at. I guess. Oh, but, there's there's money in almost everything that Rockstar makes. Uh, there is money there. Yeah, uh, there is. Yeah, well, I mean, uh, they made Bully, and yeah, I, I, I play. I put Bully down when I found Road ninety six. Yeah, they yeah. they made Bully. Uh, they've they they did the GTA. They've done. Well, they did the Max Payne three. Uh, I mean, even and I am not kidding you. Even the table tennis game that they made did very very well. Because people couldn't believe that they're like, wait a second, Rockstar's making a table tennis game, and all it was was a tech demonstration. Really, mm-hmm. they had tech that they were using in GTA Four, not Five, but GTA Four that had not yet come out. They had tech that they were using in that game, but they wanted to kind of demo how that tech worked, and they built they built a, a table tennis game, and that developed into a full game. That they eventually released, yeah, and uh, and and it did very well for them. Yeah, that happens sometimes, uh, especially with. Uh, I remember um, imports from Japan. It was basically like a partial game. It was like not not you wouldn't want to put a full price. It wasn't a full game, but there was enough of it to get your get enough entertainment out of it, mm-hmm. out of it for you. So it was like a partial game that they put out. I forget the name of the series that uh, it was like it, they did that with. But yeah, there was like some games that weren't fully polished it was like a partial thing but it was a uh, good enough to get get a little uh 
be a little right. Well, it generated some revenue in, for them. For, yeah. yeah, it generated for the company. It generated more money for them to yeah. put into what they had to do. So, uh, so yeah. It, but Rockstar is really, really good at what they do. But like I said, I don't think there's any, and I and I don't like it either. There is a rumor that they're working on the first one and doing, you know, touching touching up on the first one. Mm-hmm. Going, I thought they were going to use the girl as the main character in in the next rock. Uh, the next Red Dead. I again, I haven't heard anything. Mm. I really haven't. And uh, Red Dead came out in 2018, so and, yeah, Rockstar is real slow. Um, <laughs> if, I'd like to see Rockstar, and I don't know who makes the show, but I'd like to see that merger because Rockstar would fill out. You know, I said before. It, it doesn't matter what my contract is. I make a million a year, or eighteen million a year, or fifty million a year. Uh, uh, have it where you know where I live and what I drive and who I donate money to, charities mm-hmm. and how I dress. You know that that that's where Rockstar would come in and fill out that whole world there, and mm-hmm. and that would that would be fun to move up uh, in. In, in the show, it'd be another another layer of entertainment. But oh, that's right. Yeah, you played the show. I forgot yeah. about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and Red Dead it was a uh, Red uh, October of 2018. Yeah, yeah, it was October of 2018. Look up when Red Dead One released, okay. just to give you an idea of time between. How slow they are. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, they're uh, they're meticulous, but they when they're done with it, buddy, that thing works great. Yeah. It, it, Ten years. May of 2010. Eight years. Mm-hmm. Wow. That's sooner than I thought. <laughs> I thought it was 10 years or more, man. When? Okay, tell me this. When did GTA 5 release? GTA 5? Let's see. Yeah. There's a better example for Se- you. September of 2013. GTA 5 released in September 2013. Mm-hmm. GTA 6 we don't even we know they're making it, but that's all we know. Yeah, when they feel like, and it, it ain't coming out this year. Mm. Wow! So it ten years next year. It's ten years this year, twenty thirteen. Yeah. Oh yeah, this is twenty twenty three. Yeah. <laughs> well, I know it depends if you count yeah. that first year as year zero. Uh, you yeah. know, well, <laughs> since the release, yeah, but uh, yeah, all that development, all that development on uh, GTA Online. And the money and the, and the cash cow that became. Yeah. Yeah, they spent the time uh, building that. So, you know, GTA 6 was pushed on the back. Oh, my God. And they the kept so, yeah. releasing new versions because it came yeah. out on the 360 and PlayStation 3. Right. Then it came out on the Xbox One and the PlayStation 4. Then they released it on PC. Then they released it on PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X. It's this kept re-releasing the thing and not yeah. giving us a sequel. Uh, we likely won't get uh, G- uh, the, the GTA 6 game. It's probably not next year either. I would say... At best, late next year. Yeah, late next year at best, but probably realistically 2025. It's been so long since I played that game, it was on a PS2. Yeah, yeah I don't blame you. And and G- look, GTA, I like GTA. I like, I, I'm like. i okay with it, but it's... I like the story of it, yeah. I would much rather them be working on another Red Team. Yeah. <laughs> it's... Or yeah, another bully. Dead. To be honest, I'd be I'd be good for a bully sequel. Oh, yeah. I just, I just checked up bully. Too. Bully was uh, October of two thousand six. Yeah, and I wouldn't. Mind, yeah, and I, and I I agree with you, Bluxy. I wouldn't mind a sequel to uh, Bully because yeah. that was a good that was a good little world they introduced the characters and everything. Absolutely, uh, relatable that was and everything. A lot yeah, of fun. And that I was haven't a good time. finished the whole game yet. And uh, you know, I got I got sidetracked on Road ninety six. Now I'm going to yeah. get sidetracked on Road ninety six Mile zero. But you know. Yeah. That's what we do. I think, you, I, think you, I think you'll enjoy it, man. I really think yeah. you will. I think I know I will. Yeah. <laughs> for, for what they do. And mm-hmm. then I'm going to uh, find the devil in me, I think. you know. From, oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. you still got that the dark, one. Dark pictures yeah, yeah, involved, yeah. Super massive games or whatever. So I've got I've got things to look forward to. Mm-hmm. But anyway, I'll, I'll, I'll talk to you all later. I'll hear the rest of the news now. <laughs> all right, man. Take care. All right. Thank See you. you Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Say so I would have liked I would have liked the sequel to L.A. Noir, but uh, the ending to that kind of killed yeah, that. Yeah, it did, and it did it in such a noir way. Yeah, um, the, they the really way, the way you're supposed to in a, in a noir story. That's what I'm exactly. saying. They really followed that, even right down to the storyline and the ending. It's going to be a 
uh, it's going to be a noir thing. So I thought that was, I thought that was great. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, Lethal Migraine says, I wish I understood the appeal, the appeal of Bully. I gave it a fair try, played it for at least five hours and don't get it. I still haven't actually touched it. Um, mm-hmm. I have it, but I don't. Yeah. It was a story for me, uh, having to go through, uh, go through what, uh, Jimmy has to go through and then having that, uh, well, that big issue he has to go through with one of the uh, characters in there. Mm-hmm. That's what got. That's what got me. Now, if it, it, like I said, I've heard nothing but good things about it. I just, mm-hmm. I just never got around to doing it. Yeah, to doing anything with it. So, oh well, yeah. News. There's really, like I said, it's just kind of been a dead week for news. Let's see what we have. Uh, Xbox console sales dropped 13, percent but Game Pass. Ensures gaming revenue increase. It's from the Microsoft earnings report. Gaming revenue overall increased by 1%, driven by growth in Xbox content and services, but this was offset by the decline in console sales. Content and services revenue increased by 5% due to the third-party content and Xbox Game Pass, which is something they've always, they've always said. Watching a trailer, it's an ad, but it's a trailer for Armored Core 6. Mm-hmm. Um, there was gameplay revealed for that. Uh, a trailer of gameplay shown off. I don't know if you've seen. Do you do the Armored Core stuff? You gonna? No, I, I got know. I got friends of mine who do um, the Armored Core thing. I've never got into it, but I know it exists, and I know it's a guy. It's got a pretty good following. I know, yeah, that's the same thing. I know a lot of people who love the mech stuff and are, and are probably really excited about that. And I kind of wanted to be there too because I'm like, oh, it's uh, a uh, from software from software, and it's they're going back to the mech stuff, which I don't think I ever touched any of their previous outings in the armored core series Mm -hmm. or or any of the armored core series at all and i thought eh, maybe this will be something and i looked at the gameplay and i and it's not that it reminded me of any of their other games it just didn't look enjoyable it didn't it didn't draw in but but that's mostly how it is with mech games with the exception of hawken Mm -hmm. which was strictly a multiplayer mech game i actually kind of enjoyed that Yep. What little of it I did play, I actually kind of enjoyed it. The setting, the the, the whole maps and stuff were just amazingly well done. Mm-hmm. Um, with the the detail and how they made it look, it was it was a great aesthetic. It looked wonderful. It played pretty good. But you know, I remember when Xbox Live first launched, mm-hmm. twenty fourteen, I think, mm-hmm. or no, I'm sorry, two thousand four. Mm. <laughs> I was ten years off on that. It's like 2004, and I remember playing, it was a mech game. Mech Wolf? No. Um, it was a mech warrior, was it? No, I don't think it was mech warrior. I can't remember what it was called. It was one of the first games on Xbox Live that you could play. Mech Assault? Mech, was that it? Was it Mech Assault or Mech Assault 2 or something? Dece- uh, released December 28th of 2004. That's probably it then. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, at that time, you know... Being one of the first games to support Xbox Live online multiplayer. Yeah, exactly. Mech, Mech Assault. At that time, if you had Xbox Live, you could play online with people. So they were releasing games that were you know, being touted as like, ah, it's got Xbox Live capabilities and stuff like that. And there was... NFL 2K4, I guess, maybe, was that? Or NFL, or what was it? NFL 2K? 2K. Yeah, maybe that's 2000. all it was. Um, but No, that was on, uh, NFL 2K was uh, Dreamcast 99, 1999. Well, it must so, be NFL 2K4, 2K4, 2K5, whatever. Yeah, because 2K5 was the one that, uh, that I think the one, that was the one that set, um, set EA to get that exclusivity deal with um, um, the Players Union. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, So I had that so I could play my football games online, even though I don't play sports games, but it was a game that was online, and so I wanted to play it. And Mech Assault was another one. And I think mm, Crimson Skies, yeah. Uh, And so I tried playing Mech Assault, and I just did not get into it. Mm -hmm. I don't, I can't play the Mech games. They have never hooked me. Yeah. I love them because I love the look of, like, the Mechs, I like the cockpit view. It gives me a very spaceship feel to it. 
Mm-hmm. You know, surrounded by, you know, a big screen to see things and buttons and switches and knobs and everything. Yeah. I like that, but I don't, it just, playing it just does not sink its teeth into me. Yeah. So, yeah, never played it. So, or at least I never, I never went far with it. I know they released, I think, a couple of sequels maybe. And there was a ton of people who were mech fans who were playing the hell out of that game. Yeah. I was not one of them. So. I think the most experience I've ever had with a mech game would be um, Virtual On. Hmm. Back in the uh, Saturn. I don't remember that either. Sat back in the Saturn days. Oh, Armored Core 6 will support six-player PvP. So, there you go. Uh, what else do we have? Uh, Amazon Prime, Xbox console drop. Uh, yeah, there was something earlier in the week where... Um, Ubisoft had mentioned that uh, somebody had mentioned that their account for Ubisoft got deactivated because it was inactive. Um, And then there was concern that if you didn't keep your account active, that you would lose all of your games. And so Ubisoft had the issue. This was going on for like a day. And the next day there was an updated article saying, look, they will not delete your all. You'll just your account will be inactive. You'll have to. Log in again, reset your password, get back in, your games will be there. It's fine. Mm-hmm. So they would not delete people's library Stuff. of games that they purchased mm-hmm. is basically what it was saying. So I had two articles about that, and I, there you go. I summed it all up for you. Mm-hmm. Um, well, there's not a lot... Not much going on. A fan has uh, somehow uncovered the full skill trees for Starfield ahead of release. I have no idea. Just another leak. Yeah. In a Reddit thread titled, After almost 200 hours of research, here is the complete skill system used in Starfield. (laughs) This user shows off their impressive body of work in a 44-page document. While it bears repeating that this is all based on pre-release footage and some specifics uh, are expected to differ in the final build of the game, the document reveals that Starfield is likely to break up its skills into the following categories. Physical skill, skills like damage resistance, health, melee, that sort of thing. Social skills like persuasion, diplomacy, and bargaining. Combat skills, um, certain weapon types, shotguns, rifles, pistols, lasers, science skills, geology, medicine, astrophysics, things like that. And then the tech part of skills, robotics, piloting a ship, and ship weaponry. The document outlines five different skill trees across novice, advanced, expert, and master. And while certain skills might not be present in the final game, it stands to reason that the final version of Starfield will hew very closely to what's in this document. Oh, and if you're interested in checking out all the star systems that have been seen in trailers thus far, check out this page, it's a link, by yet another intrepid pre-release Starfield investigator who apparently has been documenting that. Uh, I'm going to post this article into our chat room so that people can go in there and take a look at it if they would like to. I'll also throw it in the Discord uh, later on so you can see that. I'm very, yeah. I look at this image here and I keep thinking of um, Fallout, the special, which I still think is one of my, my, my most favorite uh, skill tree formats in gaming, that uh, having that special system. Oh, yeah? And the, and the, uh, the, de- the basically the details of each um, skill they put out there. Wow, this is a lot of information. <laughs> Oh, wow. I just opened up the 44-page document. It is it is massive. Uh, now I want to try to... Uh, save it. There we go. That way I can get back to it pretty easy. And then I'm going to do the planet thing as well. Anyway, we are coming up on the end of the episode here. So, oh, wow. Okay, so there's a navigator, a Starfield navigator. What is this? Oh, okay. They've taken screens of all different kinds of trailers and presentations and things like that 
and they're mapping out what's being shown there. So they don't have everything, but I'm amazed at the amount of effort and work that is put into this thing. That is unreal. That's fantastic. So, anyway. I'm excited for Starfield. I really, really am. Uh, But I'm also excited to head home and put this video together. That's going to wrap it up for us. (laughs) Thanks, everybody, for joining us in the chat room. As everybody listening on the stream and on the radio as well, we want to thank uh, Bucks Gamber that called in. Also, Chris that uh, joined us on Discord there and, and talked to us. We appreciate that. Uh, Don't forget to go to ingamechat.net. Also go to our YouTube page and subscribe there. iTunes, subscribe. I don't know if we're on Spotify. You can subscribe to us there. Uh, We used to be on Zoom. Uh, (laughs) So you can subscribe to us there if you'd like to. But uh, that's going to do it for us. Have a great week. We might be here next Saturday. I don't know. Maybe it's the Saturday after. Oh, I think think we will be here because we'll be talking Evo. Yeah. Unless you want to stay home and watch Evo stuff. I don't know what you're doing. I'll be here. Okay. Well. Completely up to you. Here's music from a game called Banished. Uh, It is the menu. Or no, Banished Vault is the name of the game. It's the menu here. So you guys have a great week, and we'll see you next Saturday.